Hi there, this is video 310 and we're going to look at doing some geometric proofs. In the first chapter we did some reasoning proofs at the very end. That was a 2n plus 1, that sort of stuff when we were doing the definition of odd and even numbers and conjectures and proofs. Another type of proof is the geometric proof. And we're going to do some of them here. Um, the textbook assumes that you've done geometry for a lot of years. So some of the properties you may not have heard of, so we'll just work through a few together. So we usually start with a diagram, and there's one sitting over here. We've got lines M and N. You can see the, uh, these extra arrows here are telling us that these two lines are parallel. And then to make life easy, all the nice little angles are numbered off. Okay. And P is our transversal. All right, so this is what we're supposed to do, given lines M and N are parallel, and corresponding angles are equal. Prove that angle 3 is equal to angle 5. So I'm just going to circle this in pencil because we're doing a bunch of them um, today or in this video. So I don't really want to completely trash my diagram on an exam or something like that. If you did have to use the same diagram twice, I would just redraw it. All right, so two column proofs, geometric proofs are kind of all the same. They always start, we have statements on the left hand side and justification. So it's kind of like having a good argument with somebody, you say something and you, and because this is the reason. And then you say something else and this is the reason and hopefully you will be able to convince them. So they always start out by rewriting out what is the given, okay? I don't know, that's just how they start. And then you start, sorry, then you make your statement. So this one, I've given you kind of an outline on how to do it. So angle three is equal to angle seven. Now, the fact they're talking about corresponding angles usually tells you, hint, and we want to prove three and five. So if we start with three and we look down here, three and seven are corresponding angles. So our reason is corresponding. angles are equal. All right, so now we know that three and seven are the same size. And then it says, hey, let's talk about five and seven. Okay, well, what is the connection between five and seven? Those are, if you remember, vertical angles are equal. You can see I use a lot of mm, kind of shorthand in here. In case you're not sure that's angles, equal, you got it. Now the last one, this is one of those ones that they assume, you know, it's called the transitive property. And basically it means if two things are equal to a third thing, they're equal to each other. So essentially what we're saying is we're taking this five and we're substituting it over there into that seven. So that's what's called our transitive property. And ta-da, there is our geometric proof. So it's a series of steps, logical one thing happening in each step, and then it shows us that we have proved what the question asked for. All right, let's try another one. So that's me being using a lot of shorthand to just rewrite my given. I just write given here, that's my justification. All right, first of all, notice I screwed up the question. It's supposed to be three and six are supplementary. Move the diagram so you can still see it. So now we're looking at those two angles and we need to prove they're supplementary which means they add up to 180 degrees or form a nice straight line. Well, I don't know much 
But I do know if I want to talk about supplementary, I can say angle five and six are supplementary, right? Because they form that nice semicircle. But then there's a relationship between three and five. And three and five, heck, if you look at the diagram, they look the same size, but they look the same size because they're alternate interior angles. So I don't know which to start with, and it really doesn't, the order doesn't matter too much. So I'm going to go angle five plus angle six is 180 degrees. And the justification is they are supplementary. Form a straight line. Um, it wouldn't really matter whether you wrote supplementary or form a straight line. All right, so now we're getting, we've got the supplementary part figured out. Now, and we've also got angle six in there. All right, now we have to connect it to angle five. Or sorry, angle three. So we can say angle three is equal to angle five. What was the reason again? If you look at the diagram, alternate interior angles are equal. So now we've got, look at that. There's our angle three that we want. There's our angle six that they want. And what we can do is we can do a substitution because angle five is the same as angle three. So angle three, I'm writing that instead of angle five because they're the same size. And that is, you need to be familiar with it. Substitution. And we're done. Okay. Um, the fact, okay. So they are supplementary. We, I'll make it perfect. Oopsies. Can't see it anymore. I'm not sure you'd really need that last line, but that's making it as perfect as you can possibly get because that is what they wanted to say. Is it supplementary? They didn't exactly want it to say equal to 180, so ta da, there we go. All right, we got one more proof over on this side. And just going to take a minute. There we go. All right. So, statement. Vision. Oh, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Remember, that is a symbol for parallel. So, in case you're not sure, mathematicians are really good at writing stuff in shorthand. All right, we need to prove that angle one and angle seven. Are equal because angle one and angle eight are not equal. They're on the same. They are not alternate exterior angles. These two um, errors will be fixed on the worksheet you have. All right. So we need to get one and seven involved. Well, one I can relate to three. Oh, well, that would work, right? So one is equal to three because those are what you said vertical angles, and then three is equal to seven because corresponding angles. And then we could just use that transitive property and then they're equal to each other. All right, so.
vertical angle are equal. We said one is equal to three, and then we said three is equal to seven. Corresponding angles. And then we have 1 is equal to 3, and 7 is equal to 3. So if this is equal to that, they're both equal to the same thing, then they're equal to each other. And that would be the transitive property. Um, there is a lot of different ways we could approve this. We could have just as easily said that one and five are the same because they're corresponding angles and then talked about those two being vertical angles. There's a lot of different options. You go one to three to five to seven. That's just getting silly because that's adding extra steps that you don't need. So anyway, there is how to do some proofs. I'm pretty sure there's going to be handed in assignments on some proofs. It's just a matter of practice and I think that you'll get good at this.